Hi everyone. How is everyone doing? So welcome to Sunday Chats with Nim. And uh, let's see who's on board. Hopefully a lot of us are going to join in today. Hi Yogini, how are you doing? So everyone, as you join in, don't forget to say hi because it's celebration time. It's my 100th video today. And I'm going to announce that a few times, so bear with me. Because as more and more people join in, I want them to know that it is the 100th video because you all have played such a tremendous role and part in my journey and helping me reach this particular milestone of 100 videos. And that is so special to me. And... Um, Hi, Sadhana Kaki. Hi, Deepak. How are you all doing? We are discussing a really special topic today. And, uh, and so many people have emailed me over the months uh, asking me to write about this particular topic, which I have in the past. I've written an article, but I thought it would be a good idea to celebrate my 100th video with a video on this topic. Uh, and I'm going to share that topic in a minute. Let me just... Um, Thanks, Yogini. She says, congratulations. We love to watch them. How sweet. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sadhana Kaki, for the congratulations as well. Um, I really wanted to begin today's video by saying a very, very heartfelt thank you to all of you, all my well-wishers. Uh, like I said, I have been um, writing and uh, writing posts, writing articles, and doing videos for a long time. In fact, my first article was in 2011. And over the years, so many wonderful people, all of you, have supported me, have encouraged me. I know you're all busy, but uh, you make it, um, you know, you make an effort to stop in your busy lifestyles and read what I have to uh, write. Uh, watch my videos, you put your likes, you put your comments, and that makes me feel so special. Now, I know you all often thank me by saying that I've played, uh, you know, some kind of role in um, cheering you up on days when you need a cheering up, but you have absolutely no idea the role you all have played in my life. Because for me to, you know, stay consistent and offer content on a daily basis would have been impossible if it had not been for all the love that you guys have shown me. So thank you so much. I will continue thanking you throughout this video. And uh, I want you to know, in case I've not told you all this before, that you are all very, very special to me. Um, I don't always get the chance to thank each and every one of you personally. But please know that you're all very special, all very dear, and that I couldn't do the work I'm currently doing if it hadn't been for your support. So thank you, guys. I love you all. and. Uh, I will say my highs and hellos as we uh, proceed through the video. And uh, if you are just joining in, don't forget to uh, let me know that you are listening because that makes me feel good. And uh, like I said, today I'm celebrating my 100th video. And I'm so glad you're all here to be part of this very, very special occasion with me. So what are we talking about today? We've got about 25 minutes with each other. So hopefully you all stay for the long haul while we do this chat. Uh, and I would love it if you can share your insights and you can share your thoughts, ask your questions, post comments, whatever it is. Like you all know, if you've been listening regularly, uh, this is never a one-way street. So I love it when it's very interactive. Today we're going to talk about how to deal with toxic relatives. Now, <laughs> I'm sure that most of us at some point have had to deal with a toxic relative or two. Sometimes uh, they're in your immediate family network. Sometimes they're in your extended family. Whatever the case may be, we've, most of us have had to deal with uh, toxic relatives in some form or shape over the years. And uh, I know that a lot of uh, articles have been written over the years by different people on how to deal with toxic friends or toxic colleagues, for example. I know I myself have written a lot on this particular topic. In fact, recently, if you know, I did a video on how to deal with a frenemy. I think that was two weeks ago. And that was a, you know, a friend or an enemy who is disguised as a friend. Now, it's very easy sometimes 
when you're dealing with toxic friends, you can, if you really want to, you can choose to break away from them. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is possible that if a friend is making your life miserable, you have the option of moving away from them. But today is not about that. Because there are certain kinds of negative people, there are certain types of toxic people in your life whom you can't break ties with because they're part of your family or because they're part of your relatives. So today is going to be all about that. Now the reason I'm talking about that today is because like I said at the start of this video, I have lost track of the number of people, men and women, who have written to me requesting me to talk about this topic because uh, they are stuck, they are frustrated, they are resentful, and there is so much sadness in the world today because they are clueless about how to deal with these people who are so close to them but who are um, making their lives miserable. So I'm going to talk about that today. Let me quickly say my hellos. So bear with me, guys. I'm just going to make sure everyone who said hi, I've said hi back to them. And I'm sorry if I missed anyone. Hi, Vandana. She says, hi, Nim. Congrats, Vandana from Perth. Thank you so much. Hi, Nim. Congratulations, says Richa. Thank you, Richa. Shantala, hi, Nim. Congratulations. Thank you, Shantala. Thank you, Harish. Congrats, Nim. Way to go. Thank you, guys. Yes, it is a special day, 100 videos. So if you've been watching me on YouTube um, as of this evening or tomorrow, whenever I post it on YouTube, it will be 100 videos. Yay! Super happy about that. All right, so um, are you excited, by the way, that we're talking about how to deal with toxic relatives? Please say yes, because I'm super excited to explore this topic. So I have got a few strategies that I want to share with you today, but a bit of a disclaimer. Today's session is going to be 20 or 25 minutes. As you know, the topic that I'm about to talk about, how to deal with toxic relatives, is not an easy topic. It is, it is a complicated and a complex topic. So it is difficult, if not impossible, for me to cover it in depth in 20 or 25 minutes. So I encourage you not to think of it as a complete guide, but hopefully it will give you a framework and I can assure you that some of the strategies that I will be sharing with you today are strategies I myself have used over the years and they have been very effective. So while I can't give you an exhaustive in-depth coverage of this topic, I'm hoping that the strategies that I give you today will help you cope with and manage some of the difficult people in your immediate family network who might be making your life a little miserable. Now, the one thing I want you, or I'm hoping you will remember, is that many people live their entire lives without fulfilling their dreams, and at the end of the journey, they look back and say, it was because of person X or person Y that I wasn't able to follow my dreams. It was because of person X or person Y that I wasn't able to have a happy and fulfilling life. I want you to promise yourself today that you will not hold yourself back because of certain negative people in your family. I want you to promise yourself that you will try and reach for the stars despite them. And that's, there's a difference. Right? If so far you've allowed yourself to fall back in the background, allow everyone else to write the script for your own life, then I want you to promise yourself today that from now onwards, you will make an effort to live up to your fullest potential despite the negative people around you, despite what they say to you throughout the day, even if they're saying you're not good enough, even if they're saying you're a fool, even though they're saying everyone else is smarter than you and that you're not capable of anything, even if they're dripping with sarcasm, whatever the case may be, please promise yourself that you will not allow yourself to live an average life because of them. You will live a spectacular life despite them. Okay, and that's what today is all about. So let's get started. How to deal with toxic relatives. The first thing you need to remember is what you can change 
and what you cannot change. This may sound like a very simple strategy, but trust me, most people get it wrong. Most people are driving themselves miserable because they're trying to change things that they cannot change. So what can you not change? You cannot change toxic people or their behavior. Maybe in the long run, you can transform them into slightly different people, into more positive people, but it is definitely not a quick fix. You are definitely not going to be able to change them overnight. And the problem starts when we start thinking that we have the ability to change someone, to transform someone miraculously, magically overnight. And when they don't change, we are unhappy. Okay? So the first thing I'd like you to remember is you cannot change the toxic people in your life. Not just yet. Over the years, yes, possibly not just yet. You cannot change them, their behavior, or the words they choose when they're speaking with you. But there's good news, there's hope. What can you change? You can change the words you use when you are talking with them, and you can change your behavior when you're interacting with them, and you can change your attitude to what happens because of them. Am I making myself clear to you guys so far? Hopefully volume's all okay. And let's say, hi, Dave. Thank you for doing a great job. Thank you so much. That's very sweet of you. Hi, Marietta. Hi, Shubhada. Thank you. All right. So do you agree with me that you actually cannot change these toxic people? Where's everyone and where's everyone's comments? So type fast. Tick, 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 tick. Do you agree that you can't actually change these people? And that the only person you can change is yourself. Let me wait while you type at least a yes or something quick and brief so that I know you're, you're sort of listening and enjoying the, the video. Where are all my usual people who always type their comments? Would you agree that it's not really easy for us to change toxic people, but it is easier for us to change ourselves? and our response, right? Now this might sound like hard work to you, and it is hard work, but hey, you're not gonna shy away from hard work, are you? Because when you work hard, the results are magical. And if you allow yourself to wait till those results show, show up and turn up, um, if you allow yourself to wait till then, I promise you that when you come out at the other side of the journey, it will be magical. Okay, Vandana says yes, Richard says I agree, the only thing we can control is our behavior. Um, now I know that sometimes people say to me, oh Nim, why does it always have to be me? And why is the, the other person is the problem? Why are they not changing? Like I said, we can spend our entire lives uh, trying to make the other person change. But when we recognize that that is not really going to be possible uh, in the near future, we liberate ourselves. Okay, yes, I know the other person might be the problem, but you know what, if we take a good, honest to goodness look at ourselves, very often we are the problem too. We are standing in our own way. So let's pick the easiest option. The easiest option is changing ourselves. Okay, now, Shubhada says, oh, Shubhada, that's such a cute little statement. Shubhada says, we get mesmerized when you talk and we forget to write. Aww, that is so sweet. Thank you. But please do write because uh, I, love, I love hearing your insights, you know. And, and later after the Facebook Live has finished and at night when I'm winding up for the day and having my coffee, I, I do read through every comment properly and I savor it and I enjoy it. So please do leave your comments because even though I may not be able to explore each comment in depth while it's live, I do cherish everything you all have to tell me. Let's come to the second strategy for dealing with toxic people, okay? Now this is important. I would like you to figure out the topics that lead to maximum drama every time you are with this particular toxic relative or these particular toxic relatives, whether it's at family weddings, where it's, whether it's at family get-togethers, whether it's, whether it's at dinner at night, it doesn't matter. 
recognize, figure out the topics that lead to maximum drama. And as much as possible, avoid bringing up those topics when you are not feeling your best. For example, at the end of a long day, if you've had a bad day, if, you, if you're not feeling too well, know which topics lead to maximum drama with these people. And when you're not feeling strong, when you're not feeling emotionally, physically, mentally up to it, avoid those topics because you will fly off the handle and you will upset yourself and everyone else uh, because you're not emotionally ready to handle them. Unfortunately, a lot of people may subconsciously know what topics uh, all these toxic people typically like to talk about that create maximum drama, but we don't have it at a conscious level in our minds, right? Now, I'm someone personally who makes it a habit to remember which topics uh, make conversations awkward and difficult. And if I am not up to it, if I'm, not, if I'm not feeling strong, I avoid those topics. Now, that is not a cowardly way out, according to me. I think that is, like they say, um, a survival theory. Okay, so you've got to look after your own well-being. So know which topics lead to a lot of arguments, lead to a lot of um, drama with these particular toxic relatives, and whenever possible, avoid them. Of course, explore those topics when there's absolute uh, need to have them sorted out, but being aware is the first step, okay? Because, um, now you might say, but Nim, I might avoid the topic, but these people still somehow manage to find their way back to that sensitive topic, and you know, there we go, we all start arguing about it. Yes, I know uh, that is possible, because a lot of people, especially these toxic people, they start an argument just for the sake of it, and they sit back and watch the fun. But when you are aware of those topics, you know that that's a trap you're about to walk into. So I think self-awareness is key. When you know, you're able to sidestep that trap and you can avoid being made a scapegoat by these people, okay? Um, so for all those who've just joined in, we are talking about how to deal with toxic relatives. Uh, we're not talking about toxic friends or toxic colleagues because it is relatively easier to deal with them. If it's to toxic and annoying friend, you can just stop answering their calls, I suppose. But what happens when they're in your family? What happens when they are in your uh, network of relatives? Then you can't run away from them, right? You can't just say, uh -uh, I don't want this person to be my aunt anymore. I don't want this person to be my in-law anymore. You can't say that. So you somehow have to deal with them. And that's what today is about. And it's my 100th video. So thank you for joining me today and celebrating this milestone. Okay, is everyone enjoying the session so far? Oh, you only have one option. You can only say yes. Please don't say no. <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying it. Thank you for joining. Let me go to my third strategy, and that is, um, and that is emotional triggers. Can anyone tell me, and I have talked about emotional triggers in the past, can anyone tell me what is an emotional trigger? So my third strategy for dealing with toxic relatives is to know your emotional triggers. Now, unfortunately, majority of the population don't really know their emotional triggers. So can anyone tell me what that is? And Shubhada says, yes, thank you, Shubhada. I'm glad you're enjoying the session. Thank you, I didn't leave you guys with any choice though, but thank you, very sweet. So what is an emotional trigger? Uh, okay, Sally says, yes, we are always enjoying, thank you. Thank you, Sally. All right, so let me start talking about emotional triggers while you all are maybe thinking or typing about it. There's always a lag. Um, an emotional trigger is any topic that, or any, any, any situation that annoys you, depresses you, saddens you, flusters you, uh, fills you with resentment, okay? For example, 
Uh, remember I, I put up an article a few days ago which where a woman said to me that whenever a husband talks about her weight issues, whenever a husband says that you know she should start going to the gym and become more fit, every time he talks about weight, she just loses it. Right? She loses her temper, she uh, loses her self-confidence, she loses her uh, cool. For her, any discussion about weight is an emotional trigger. And I think I wrote, which other article had I written, which was also about an emotional trigger, I'm trying to remember. Um, I remember I met this, met this lady, now she's a homemaker. Uh, she's chosen to uh, be at home and look after the kids and she is really proud of her decision to be a homemaker but unfortunately her uh, her husband and her in-laws I'm just trying to remember what she had said her husband and her in-laws always sort of taunt her and give her examples of other people in the fa other women in the family who have pursued a career and who have climbed the corporate ladder and who are doing very well for themselves and they always compare her unfavorably to them almost making her ashamed to have made that decision to not pursue her career okay so every time at the dinner table uh, they start talking about people who've done well in their professional lives, this particular woman um, starts feeling resentful or uh, she starts feeling, she starts doubting herself. So for her, that is the emotional trigger. Are you sort of getting now the context of what an emotional trigger is? It is any topic, any situation which if others talk about it, you know that that's going to get a sort of negative reaction from you. So same like that woman, whenever her husband or anyone talked about weight or losing weight or becoming uh, fitter, she would, the, the worst part of her nature would come out. Okay, and similarly for this woman who was a homemaker, every time somebody criticized her about her decision to be a housewife, a homemaker, that would bring out uh, the worst part of her nature. So those are emotional triggers. Once you recognize what those emotional triggers are, you can sidestep the trap. You know why? Because these toxic people in your family or in your relatives have actually figured out your emotional triggers even before you have. Okay, so you are merely going through life completely unaware of your emotional triggers. This lady, you know, has no clue that the weight issue is her emotional trigger. So of course, people around her, if they feel that they want to annoy her or irk her, will bring up that topic and she will have an argument because she's not aware that any conversation about losing weight is exactly what triggers a negative emotion from her. So people around you, my friends, have probably guessed your emotional trigger and you are not aware of them yourself. So I suggest take a moment tonight to really think about those one or two things which, and you'll find that it is a pattern. You'll find that um, the same things annoy you throughout life. You'll find that the same topics bring out negative reactions from you, right? But let's start becoming a bit more aware. Let's start becoming more conscious because people around you may be taking advantage of your vulnerability, uh, may be taking advantage of the fact that you are not consciously aware of the things that trigger your negative emotions. So think about what your emotional triggers are so that next time someone tries to start an argument by broaching on that topic, you know to look out for it. You know to sidestep that trap. Okay, And that's the best way to deal with people who are taking advantage of the fact that you sometimes are not in control of your emotional triggers. So this was my third strategy. How is everyone doing? Super silence at the other end, but I trust that you are enjoying the session. And uh, I've got a couple more, oh, maybe three or four more strategies uh, for dealing with toxic relatives. One of my favorite strategies is to, um, to pick, hand pick your personal cheerleader squad. <laughs> if any of you have been reading my posts over the years, you will know that cheerleading is one of my favorite topics in the whole wide universe. 
right? Because the same way you guys are cheerleaders for me, uh, I, and thank you for that, I think all of us need to have a personal cheerleader squad. Okay, these are one or two people, and they may be living in any corner of the world. You need to have one or two people on whom you can depend at any time of the day or night. You, you, you must have one or two people whom you can call up and say, please help me rediscover my faith in myself. Now you will know that we can't all have about 20 people who, you know, who are your 2 a.m. friends or 3 a.m. friends or who will turn up on your doorstep in the middle of the night if you call out for them, right? You, but you may very well, if you're truly blessed and lucky, have at least a couple of people on whom you can depend. So you must have a personal cheer, uh, cheerleading squad because if you have toxic relatives that you sort of regularly meet, they can destroy your morale. They can stop you from living an authentic life. They can stop you from following your dreams and fulfilling your potential. And for that, you need your own cheerleaders. And they don't have to be uh, located in the same city as you. They could be in any corner of the world. But you should know that when you are at your lowest, when you are going through a dark patch, you must know that you have these one or two or three people, or if you're super lucky, half a dozen people, um, on whom you can depend, okay? So make sure you know who that personal cheerleading squad is. Just don't go through life thinking that, oh yeah, yeah, I've got plenty of friends. Uh, you may have plenty of friends number-wise, but we all know, all of us, after a certain age, we realize that true friends are few and far between, but uh, they are there, and if we look long and hard enough, we will know who they are, but we need to be aware of them. Okay, so, uh, and that brings me to my fifth strategy. Uh, hmm, this one is a tricky one to convince people about, but it is my absolute favorite. Okay, so bear with me while I explain the context of this fifth strategy that you need to hone and develop in order to deal with anyone toxic um, in your circle of relatives. So what is this? This is you, each and every one of you who's watching this video. You need to discover that one skill that you are very good at, and then you need to spend the rest of your days mastering that skill. Now you're probably all thinking, what does this have to do with dealing with toxic relatives? So I'm going to explain to them. So what the strategy I just said is you must figure out one skill, at least one skill that you are good at. And then spend the rest of your days honing that skill and mastering it. The reason it is important is that it becomes a whole lot easier to tolerate and forgive toxic relatives. When you have a rock solid faith in your own ability to stand on your own two feet, if life ever takes you to that turning point. Okay? The reason so many people are allowing themselves to be crushed by toxic family members is because they have lost their spark. They have lost their faith in themselves. They have lost their belief that they matter. Okay. Now this belief in oneself doesn't just happen magically. It doesn't happen simply by willing it. Self-confidence is born when we realize that we are really good at what we do. And when we are really good at what we do, when we are spending our time in meaningful pursuits, when, like uh, Steve Jobs said, we are making a dent in the universe, when we are doing that, anything anyone says around you falls on deaf ears because you know deep down within yourself that you matter. 
The only way you will convince yourself that you matter, that your life has meaning, that you are truly leaving behind a legacy is when you find your lane and you stick to it. Now, some of you who, is, who are watching this video might think, but Nim, I don't think there is any skill that I'm good at. Now, I don't want you to ever think that. Each and every person who's born has a skill that they are good at. They have the potential to become a master at it. That skill might still be hidden, that skill might not be discovered, that is fine. But it does not mean that you don't have a skill which you can use to make a meaningful difference in the universe. Maybe you've been so busy in routine, day-to-day -day life that you haven't sat down and invested a few hours of your life to really think about what you want to do in life. And because you are not perhaps sort of uh, living up to, a, to your true potential. That's why toxic people, toxic relatives have so much power over you. Like I said at the beginning of this strategy when I was first talking about it, it becomes a whole lot easier to tolerate um, and forgive negative people around you when deep down you have faith that you know what, you, you can say whatever it is to me all day long, you can tell me I'm worthless, you can tell me I'm a fool, you can tell me the whole, the rest of the family members are smarter than I am. I know I matter because I know the work I'm doing. I know the difference I'm making. So if in case, my friends, that you don't know what skill um, you're good at, it's possible that you haven't been curious about life on a large scale. Life has a lot to offer. Okay? There are many, many, many things that you haven't tried yet. Many skills you haven't explored yet. So you need to start becoming curious about what's out there. Right? Maybe you think, oh, I might be good at playing the guitar. And then you try playing guitar and then you realize you're lousy at it. That's fine. Try something new. You're not going to overnight magically discover that skill you were born to explore. It's not going to happen. Right? You're going to have to try multiple things before you figure out what you're good at. For me, for example, public speaking was, was something I never thought I would ever do. I mean, if any of my college friends are watching this, they will tell you Nim had the worst stage fright in school and college. I would never, ever, ever go up on stage to perform or speak or anything because I was terrified. And today I'm speaking in different corners of the world to massive audiences, OK? Now, I allowed myself to explore public speaking. I realized over the years that I enjoy it, and that I'm decently good at it. And then I decided to explore that avenue further. But in the meanwhile, I also tried out many, many other different skills that I was horrible at. I was lousy at. And uh, not only was I lousy at them, I didn't even enjoy them. But I was curious, you know, let's try this, let's try that. And I failed often. I failed gloriously, but in, that, in all that failing, through all those failures, I slowly got a glimpse of one or two things that I thought, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe that's, that's the direction in which I can make some form of difference to the world. Okay, So don't be scared of trying new things. Don't be scared of failing. It's good to fail because it shows that you've tried it. You know, it, it, It's good because at the end of the journey, you're not going to be filled with regret and tell yourself, if only I had tried it. Oh my goodness, let me drink some water because I get so, super excited when I talk about this whole finding one's purpose kind of thing. Right? Very important to find the one skill you were born to excel at because when you are engaged in meaningful pursuit, when you're doing work that, that uh, fills you with joy and you know you're good at, all the toxic relatives around you can say whatever they want all day long, and it won't make any difference to you. Any questions so far, guys? Because now I'm going to come to the end of my little talk today, my 100th video that I'm so excited about. Any questions before I wind up? Let's see. Let me just answer some. Vandana says, glad I have them. So she's referring to, I believe, when I was talking about 
um, the cheerleader squad. So that's excellent. Hi, Vibhavi. Hi, Divya. Congrats to the 100th video. Thank you so much. Okay, so we've been talking today for the last, believe it or not, um, 35 minutes or so about how to deal with toxic relatives. We can't really, um, we can't escape toxic relatives, but we can develop some really good strategies to deal with them, okay? So let me quickly summarize uh, what were those strategies that I've shared today. Some of you, if you've arrived late, uh, this video will be shared on my timeline, on my lovely YouTube channel. I hope you've subscribed. Uh, in case you haven't, please tell me why not. Like I always say, it's a, it's a lovely channel, so you will enjoy all the videos that are there. Okay, let me quickly summarize. Firstly, you cannot change toxic relatives overnight, but you can change your own uh, behavior. You can change your own attitude. You can uh, change the words you use when you interact with them. Second strategy, recognize the topics that lead to maximum drama when you are with this particular toxic relative and avoid that topic entirely when you are not feeling emotionally uh, at your best. Third strategy, know and recognize your emotional triggers. These are the topics, situations uh, that bring out a negative emotion in you. Okay. Fourth strategy, pick your personal cheerleader squad. The one or two people who uh, are uh, going to be there for you in your times of need. And the fifth strategy was discover the one skill that you're super good at and then spend the rest of your time honing that skill and becoming a master at it. Because it is easier to forgive toxic people, it is easier to turn a deaf ear to them when you truly believe that you have the ability to stand on your own two feet and fend for yourself if you ever have to. Shubhada says, congratulations for your 100th video. Love your Helensburg picture. Thank you, guys. Uh, so as you can tell, it is the same top I was wearing in the photo that I posted earlier. So I was at the Venkateshwara Temple at uh, Helensburg in New South Wales. And for any of you who've been there, it's such a serene... Uh, it's such a serene and beautiful place, uh, and it, it fills you with so much of uh, sort of quiet uh, gratitude when you're there. Such a beautiful place. So thank you, Shubhada. Yeah, I had a lovely morning there. And uh, I even went to the canteen, and I had the, the idli sambar and the vada sambar, yummy. I'm hungry just thinking about it. OK, so. So that was it. And I want to end today's session by telling you something profound. I love profound, right? So I'm going to tell you something profound. Remember that your brain, your mind, it listens to instructions only from you. I'm going to repeat this. Your brain listens to instructions only from you. Not from your spouse, not from your in-laws, not from your relatives. It will believe, your brain will believe only what you ask it to believe. And you know why this is so special? Because this means that even if a toxic relative spends their entire time calling you names, telling you that you are worthless, telling, making your life miserable, they can say what they want. You still have the power to send the right message to your brain because your brain is waiting to hear instructions from you. You are the master of your brain, not your in-laws, not your spouse, not your relatives. So make sure that no matter what the people around you are saying all day to you, no matter what they're saying when you go to family weddings, no matter what they're saying when you go to family events, you make sure you write the script before sending it to your subconscious mind. Because if you tell your brain, I am worthless, I am hopeless, I am a failure, your brain will learn to believe it. And then it's a spiraling thing. You spend the rest of your life believing you're a victim. You spend the rest of your life believing you're good for nothing. 
right? So you must be emotionally strong. And no matter what anyone tells you, you write the script before giving it to your subconscious mind because that script will make all the difference. That script is what will transform you into a successful person as opposed to someone who simply led a mediocre life. And I'm going to end with a beautiful quote by the Buddha who once said, we are shaped by our thoughts. We become what we think. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves. Such a beautiful quote by the Buddha, we become what we think and um, we are shaped by our thoughts. So it's very, very essential, crucial, life transforming for us to choose our thoughts with care. So my friends, like I say, I love you all. I want you all to be happy. I want you all to live fulfilling lives. I want you all to make your dreams come true. So if so far you have been held back by some toxic relative or two in your inner circle, please don't be held back. Please don't be held back. I don't want you to reach the end of your journey and think, you know what? I, uh, I could have lived a better life had it not been for relative X or relative Y. I don't want you to think that. I want you to think that, well, there were some nasty people in my family, but you know what? I still managed to triumph over all those obstacles and truly try uh, to make a dent in the universe. Okay? So I hope these strategies help you. Like I said at the start, it is not a be all end all guide to deal with toxic people in your life because. Uh, toxic people can be very, very complex. They can make your life miserable, and I can't cover it in depth in, in 30 minutes. But I hope that I've given you some hope, and I hope that, um, that eventually uh, you will develop enough belief in yourself to reach for the stars. Now, when you are reaching for the stars, when you are fighting for your dreams, trust me, it is scary, very scary, because there will be obstacles. Um, there will be people who pop up every now and then uh, that will try and stop you, that are hoping you will fail. But like I wrote in the article this morning, uh, even though there are people around you who are secretly hoping you will fail, your job is not to figure out who those people are. Don't spend your time trying to figure out who they are. Your job is to never give up. So please promise me that you will never give up, that you will reach for the stars, and that you will live a happy and fulfilling life. You owe it to yourself. Okay, my darlings, I love you all. Thank you for joining me today. It is my 100th video. Like I said at the beginning, I couldn't have reached this milestone without all the love that you've all shown me, all the, uh, all the appreciation. You motivate me. And I'm truly grateful to you all. I'm even becoming a little teary talking about all this. Uh, I don't do emotional very well, but thank you. So I will see you again. Uh, when is my next video? My next YouTube video will be on, what are we, Sunday? Um, on Tuesday. So I'll see you then. Take care. And if you're watching this after the live session finishes, please write your thoughts on this, um, on the time feed, because I will read it tonight at the end of the day. Bye-bye. See you soon.